About a week ago, I took this pot out to a park to fire it, and I wanted to do a video on uh, successful outdoor firing in cold weather. Uh, and I'll give a link to that here. Uh, and it fired fine. You can see it's, it's a good solid pot, not a problem. Uh, the problem is, is that it's just ugliness. Uh, this is supposed to be red paint, and it is kind of this grayish pink stuff. I don't know. But here's what happened. When you have a fire, it needs three things. It needs fuel. Well, I had wood, and I think the wood was okay. Uh, it needs heat. Well, the wood was on fire, so there was heat there, and enough heat, in fact, to fire this thing. Uh, but it also needs oxygen, and the fire was oxygen starved. And what ended up happening, I had a, a lot of uh, smoldering, and it was smoky and sooty, and so I didn't have enough airflow, and the reason is it was in a fire pit that was pretty deep, and it just doesn't allow good airflow in there. Well, this should be solvable. Uh, we can just refire this thing, and hopefully it will burn off all the carbon that's on the outside here, reveal, hopefully, some fairly attractive uh, red paint underneath. So that is the plan today. It's a reasonably nice day. Uh, certainly below freezing here in February, uh, but we will still employ our cold weather tactics. I will preheat this in the oven, uh, build a primary fire, and then take it out. And uh, we'll see how this all goes. Uh, hopefully we will have a good outcome. Okay, here we go. We're uh, ready to fire our ho ho cum ho ho cum. <laughs> Oh, um, pots here. This is the one now that uh, needs refiring. These just came out of my oven in the house, so they were at 550 degrees. And it's interesting, this is a totally, totally unfired pot, but listen to this. So it, it's already chemically changed some, uh, but obviously it's not ceramic at this point. Turn these upside down, put some sherds on them. Again, this is cold weather firing here. Uh, I would think it's around somewhere in between 10 and 15 degrees. I want to cover these pots, but at the same time, I want to make sure that there's enough airflow around there to uh, make sure that they actually get hot. So you think about the circulation of the air. It's a little bit of a breeze today, but I don't think it's enough that's going to make a big difference. So we'll burn this. Let everything sit, at least for a while, let everything cool down so this cold weather doesn't crack our pots. So part of the goal is to fire the one pot, it's never been fired, and the other is to refire a pot. In this case, I'm using all dimensional lumber. Basically, two by fours, two by sixes that I've split. So I'll time the firing and just see how long it takes. I put some larger pieces in first and smaller pieces on the outside. My hope is that the fire starts on the outside and then builds in with the idea that it'll be a little bit slower start. Yeah, let's get this thing going. Should take right off. We're about 15 minutes into the firing. The pottery that I can measure with my uh, inf 
infrared thermometer. Everything is about 1400, 1500 degrees. We're definitely in an oxidizing step now. Uh, the carbon is basically burned off. Uh, and so hopefully that is also burning off the carbon on the outside of the pot that we are refiring. And we'll find that out here in a couple of hours when everything cools off. Uh, so it's not only the, the fire is burning pretty clean, I think, and is oxidizing, but also the sherds will protect that uh, fire, or the pottery that we are refiring uh, from being touched by organic material that could leave black marks on it. So we will see what ends up happening with this. So now we're at 20 minutes out. I think we'll just shut off the camera for now and we'll come back when things have cooled off. All right, let's review real quickly uh, the outcome of this project to refire pottery. And the pot that I started with was gray and kind of blackish and ugly. Uh, and it was all because uh, I just got too much uh, carbon on it in, the, in a poor firing originally. Although the, the clay fired fine, this, the color was awful. So here is the end result. Uh, so it turned out fine and it's still solid. The reds, I'm not crazy about the reds, but that's just the nature of the paint. I think the firing was what it was supposed to be. Why did that happen? Why does this work? Well, if you want to refire, there's a couple things you need. One, you need a fire that is a clean fire. Plenty of oxygen, especially you're going to have that uh, last phase where all the carbon is burned out of the wood. And uh, so a nice clean uh, fire. Uh, the other thing is to use some pottery sherds over it and that creates a buffer between the fire and the carbon uh, and the pot itself. The other thing, because we're cold weather firing, it creates a buffer for the uh, thermal shock that we would have. If you do those things, you probably are going to be okay, but you know, pots still can break. Uh, so it's never a guarantee, but this cleaned up real nice. I'm happy with that. And then I also fired another piece of pottery that had not been previously fired. This is a Hoacom uh, piece that uh, turned out fine. Now I thought I had the same color reds on this, but it, it turns out to be a little bit different. Hoacom pottery is not slipped. It was a brown clay with typically red uh, painting. Uh, oftentimes they did have animals and they had repeating patterns, but they had a lot of geometric patterns as well. So I'm happy with this as well. Shows that we can continue to do cold weather firing. So thanks very much. I appreciate you joining me today. Uh, and I really appreciate the, the comments that you leave. And the thumbs up are always nice, of course. And until next time, this is Wes, Airstream Wanderings. Wishing you health, happiness, peace and love. Take care. Bye-bye.